it's a, I mean, it's a win now. I mean, it's really a win now situation. It always really has been. We always talk about, but now more than ever, because you go out and you get Stafford, you have him for two years, maybe more, but we don't know if Stafford's the type of guy he gets a Super Bowl and he's like, all right, I'm, I want to go be a dad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't really know where he's going to go in that regard. Um, but I do think that you want to make the most out of those two years at the very least. And if, it, you know, somebody like Henderson were to go down, unless Xavier Jones or somebody like that emerges, if it's before the, you know, the trade deadline, I think that they would try to get a Kareem Hunt, maybe even, you know, Jamal Williams uh, with the Lions. I That was a weird fit for me. I feel like Jamal Williams is a guy that can tote the rock and be a go-to back. Uh, and seeing him kind of, you know, being that timeshare with, I mean, they also added another running back that I really liked in Jamar Jefferson, but you have, you know, Swift, Jefferson, uh, Williams. It's, it's kind of weird. I mean, it's not as weird as green Bay. Cause I mean, they, you know, they have a timeshare. Um, but I definitely think, you know, those guys would be, you know, available, or at least they would try and, you know, maybe even the Raiders say Raiders are going nowhere. They have, you know, Jacobs and they have Kenyon Drake. Maybe they're an option. Uh, maybe you, <laughs> you go with familiarity sake and you call up Miami and say, Hey, you know, Gaskin's pretty good. Ahmad's pretty good. Dokes looks good. You want to give us some Malcolm Brown back? I mean, he has familiarity with our offense, you know, like, I mean, I, I honestly, at that point, it would really raise, uh, a red flag if if Henderson goes down. I think that was the biggest issue with Acres is that I didn't feel like Henderson wasn't capable of you know taking those carries and and doing something with them. He was the most efficient back last year out of all of them. Um, but the and he broke the most tackles and you know forced the most missed tackles. But the thing is, with Cam Acres gone, their increased depth and having all of this like you know, this luxury depth, because at the time it seemed like acres was a luxury pick. Now, all of a sudden it's like they're one injury away from having a bunch of running backs, a bevy of running backs that have never played an NFL snap before. And, and that is a concern um, moving forward. Yeah. And I, I, it, historically we see so often with this offense where there are a lot of different styles of players and running backs or, or just, Different ga- different names who aren't necessarily established in the league do really really well. Going back to Mike Shanahan, uh, of course, it's well documented. So it, there could be a guy, and even with a fantasy lens, it would be interesting to invest in a player who doesn't necessarily have a big name that they bring, whether it be trade or whether one of these free agents. These are the kind of situations, these kind of nebulous backfields where we do know that Henderson is the guy, but. Uh, I suppose before the Acres injury, his ADP was not as not as high as it is now. But when these backfields are kind of up in the air a little bit, that's where there can be some major fantasy production, especially if Henderson goes down. And then if you're getting Adrian Peterson or somebody like that in 15th round, something like that, uh, that's where you could get a lot of production from not that high of an investment. I mean, I'm seeing Xavier Jones go off the board at the end of these redrafts. So I'm like, all right, these people are they're they're, they're watching closely. Um, that would be my my bet. If, if Henderson goes down, I think Jones could. I think Jones, given that the carries, I think could go over a thousand yards because I don't think people realize like a thousand yards in a 17 game season really isn't that much anymore. You know, it, it kind of. I, I really everything with a 17 game season kind of dumbs down stats in general. Um, I mean, we could talk all night and I, you know, I know you're a busy man. Uh, why don't we wrap up with, I want to get your thoughts on, on how different or rather how similar this new defense with uh, Raheem Morris is going to be, you know, losing Brandon Staley. It feels weird, right? They were the number one defense and then they lose their defensive coordinator like the next day, it seems like. So what do you make of this? Because I'm actually pretty high on Raheem Morris and I was really interested to see, you know, the difference once they got rid of Dan Quinn in Atlanta. And I don't think Dan Quinn's a bad coach by any means, but I think it was time for him to leave. Um, The way they played down the stretch with Raheem Morris, I, I felt like they, he definitely got everybody going and I felt like the team improved in general. Um, but what are your thoughts on him, you know, with the Rams and, and can this defense get back to where they were 
with Raheem Morris. Yeah, I, I, well, I think it'll be challenging because their defense was that good, <laughs> and, and the numbers are incredible for what the Rams were able to do. There, there's a lot of hype, and I talked about it uh, in the video that I did, where they really started to become a too high predominant defense, and it's a lot of quarters coverage, a lot of cover two. And what that does is even the numbers in the box in terms of the amount of blockers and the amount of defenders. And that can be really challenging for the defense because it leaves you outgapped. That means there's an open gap in terms of running the ball. So when everybody gets blocked up, there will be one open gap. And if everybody gets blocked up, there aren't, there isn't an extra guy to come in and hit the ball carrier. So the Rams were actually one of the best run defenses last year, which is mind blowing. It's incredible because everybody else is playing one high for the most part where they have enough guys in the box to fit all the gaps and have that extra guys hitting the running back. So I think with Raheem Morris, I think he's going to do aspects of what Staley did. We know he's a Tampa two predominant guy. So he, I think he will base out of the two high stuff still. I'll be interested to see if they're still stopping the run at the, at the same level as they did this last year. I'll be really interested to see what I really liked about what Staley did was he put the most stress on his best players. So Aaron Donald had to swallow up all these blocks, but also still be dominant and rush the passer and <laughs> sack the quarterback a million times and blow up runs for TFLs and whatnot. And Jalen Ramsey was often put one-on-one push coverage, push all the coverage away from him, just lock down the best receiver and be on an Island, just classic, you know, Revis Ramsey, those type of guys type stuff. So I'll be interested to see if Raheem Morris is able to also put that stress on those players. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily fit with your philosophy or with your scheme where those guys are still going to be very good, but are you asking them to do that same level of stuff where you can kind of let everybody else, all the different guys in your defense, you know, the Joseph days, the John Johnson's, all these guys really elevate. And those guys are good players. But when you put more stress on Donald and he's eating double teams or where, Ramsey is just one-on-one doesn't need safety help doesn't need linebacker help inside and zones that's 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 critical and I it's so important that the Rams have these two you know goats if you will it's so important that they have these guys I want to see for he Morris how much he's going to go towards this daily stuff is that going to make him get away from his his own philosophy which can be detrimental you know you can't just copy and paste somebody else's scheme and there's plenty of times and instances in NFL history where that doesn't work So how is he going to kind of blend his philosophy with what Staley did? And how is he going to deploy Donald and Ramsey in a way to make them as effective last year with still keeping those same results is what I'll be interested in.